we're kicking off 2017 with uh, Charles Manson is in the hospital. Is he? Yeah. Maybe this will be the year all the bad people die? Maybe this will be like the anti-rapture? Or he'll just walk out of there like, I'm fine, bitches! Yeah. Just, just to make us feel like shit. What? I can't be entirely mad at 2016. I got married to a man well-possessed of exactly the kind of skills I need to survive the coming apocalypse. <laughs> he is my apocalypse survival plan. He's just gonna blow everything up. Cool. <laughs> as long as it's not greedy or are, my kittens. Are you hearing this? Greedy. No. Is he howling at you? Greedy. Yes, a whole lot of that. Would you shut? Just shut up, dude. Can I freak him out? Oh, he can't hear me. He can't hear you. Oh. You're my headphones. Oh, <laughs> I told you. Surprise! It's Grady. Oh, come here, pal. He sounds oh. like Miracle used to when she used to tell me off. <sighs> oh, hello, Fluffapuff. He's a little Fluffapotamus. <sighs> He's a little asshole. Hello, Fluffapotamus. You know what he did to me today? After I got back from an eight-hour drive last night, headache, well, actually, migraine, neck pain, the whole nine yards. Uh, we didn't do the show last night because I was, you were, you were having a bad night. I was fucking trashed. So I go to bed this morning before the sun had even come up. I woke yeah. up with this. S oh. standing on my chest and yodeling at me. <laughs> oh, he was serenading you. He was being a I, I, So right now, I am on a whole bunch of Monster. Not an endorsement. Don't drink Monster, kid. It's bad for you. And uh, I, I basically... I am basically not conscious right now. I am just being animated by caffeine. I'm trying to summon a wild dotty. I don't know where she went. Doodlebug. Right below you. Oh, you want you want your crinkly ball? Come here, baby. Oh, come here. I am much like. Uh, have you ever seen Return of the Living Dead? I'm much I like that. Not. I am I am a corpse being animated by strange okay. random chemicals at okay. this point. Okay, okay. I know you don't like being picked up. So you want crinkly ball? You want crinkly ow, ball? ow, 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 loud, loud, loud. Sorry. Loud, loud, loud. There you go. Play with it very quietly, okay? <laughs> so but we have news as usual. The, news, it, yes. news you cannot use. God, please don't. All right, so each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call "What the fuck is wrong with you?" And um, it is—it's still just post Christmas. Uh, it's still technically in the religious sense one of it's still Christmas until Friday. Really? Yeah, Friday is with whether you call it Little Christmas, Three Kings Day, whatever. Man, days of Christmas because it took twelve days for the three wise men to reach the manger. Oh, I was about to say Mary was in labor for a long ass time. No, she was just sitting in that fucking barn with a baby for a long ass time. Well. Any, since we are post Christmas, we are still getting Christmas esque stories. And what's more Christmas esque than kids and toys? And this one, it, Mike, I have. This kid is amazing. I, we, we often tell you on this show, watch your damn kids. Because you cannot, you cannot trust them. Mm -mm. They will get into all manner of watch your damn kids. Six years old. I'm going to stress that. The kid in this next story is six years old. 
child uses sleeping mom's fingerprints to buy Pokemon gifts. Oh no. Six years old. Fingerprint ID locked phone wasn't going to stop this six-year-old from catching them all. Online purchases have been a pain in the wallet for parents. The Federal Trade Commission hitting, uh, hitting Apple, Google, and Amazon with complaints accusing the companies of making it too easy for kids to make in-app purchases. Kids buying online without their parents' consent has cost these companies millions in settlements. For Bethany Howell in Arkansas, her daughter's unsolicited shopping spree reportedly cost her $250 in Pokemon presents. The six-year-old used her mother's mother's thumb to unlock and open the Amazon app as mom napped on the couch just days before Christmas. I mean, that's pretty smart. Little Ashland ordered 13 Pokemon gifts for herself and told her parents she was shopping when they thought their Amazon account was hacked. The six-year-old at least reassured her parents, though, that she got the shipping address right. Oh, well, that's good. It is way too easy because Dan has a game on his phone for the cats because we're those people. Uh-huh. And it's a little bug that they can chase around. In fact, if you have a Samsung, I forget what it's called, but it's amazing. Grady might lose his mind. So there's all, and there's all different ones. There's a bug, there's a spider, there's a butterfly, there's a mouse. Every, every now and then... He'll just leave them play with it and come back and find that they've downloaded another bug. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking cats. They're not even a year old. And they don't have thumbs. But they can download shit. It's too easy. Luckily, all the bugs are free. But th this, I mean, this kid, six. How did that not wake you? I feel like that would wake me up. <laughs> This is some, like, Mission Impossible shit. Did she do, like, the Ant-Man thing where, like, she put some tape on the doorknob and then it <laughs> flew? No, her mom was just passed out, probably had her hand hanging off the sofa, so she just sort of went, eh, eh, eh. Wow. Yeah, that's a kid you're going to have to watch when she can drive. That kid's, um, I am impressed. If this was my kid, I would, I would just, I would have a hard time being angry. Like I would she's just... either got a future in the CIA or <laughs> San Quentin. She's gonna be a super villain. Yeah. This is this is gonna be a Bond villain. That I'm just I'm I'm fucking impressed with this kid. That's amazing. Two hundred fifty dollars. Oh, what are Pokemon presents? Um, let me like, see. Is that for the game? Like for the phone game? No, because she, she ordered them from on cards. She ordered them from Amazon. Let's see. There's amiibos. There's cards. There's plushies. There's cartridges. Okay, so like stuff. Like stuff. Yes. Okay. Like she wasn't buying. No, no, no. She wasn't like in Pokemon Go buying shit. She was buying okay. shit off. Of... And she, she she did get the shipping address right. I Six mean, years old. That means it's stuff they can return. Well, uh, Howell was only allowed to return four of the items. Oh. But that's better than nothing. Like, it's not like she bought a bunch of fucking gold in World of Warcraft that you're uh, goddamn stuck with, and it's not even a thing that really exists. Mm. Like, it, I mean, that it could be worse. It can... Tara, with this show, it can always be fucking worse. I'd be impressed, but I'd also be like, well, Merry Christmas! You done shop for yourself. <laughs> For the next two years. Um, hello. Now, oh, hello. Now, this next one, I'm going to give you the link to this so you can listen for yourself. You know what? Parents, sometimes you just got to chill the fuck out. This happens with every goddamn generation in so many ways. Remember long, long ago when they used to claim if you played a record backwards, you'd hear... You know, backward masking for Satan and shit. And then every fucking toy that comes out, this this happens with every toy. I'm going to let... You cancer? Well, no. But I'll let... Well, that maybe, but I don't know for sure. I'll, I'll let you... I'll let you listen for yourself, and I'll let everyone at home... We got video for this one. Let's let everyone at home have a listen. Um, What do you think you're hearing 
in uh, in this clip. Let's let everybody listen real fast. Here we go. Oh. Right? Yeah, I don't hear it saying anything. It sounds a little... Yeah. Well, apparently... Little porn hub. Parents are convinced this little thing, which is called a Hatchimal, is swearing at their children. No, it's orgasming at their children. <laughs> In videos posted on YouTube, the bird-like toys appear to say, fuck me, as they sleep. No, they don't. Yeah, I definitely did not hear that. I did not hear fuck me. I did, no. did not hear fuck me. Uh, the, the news follows numerous complaints that hatchimals are failing to hatch. I see. She's just snatching the toys one by one. Hatchimals, which sold out in stores weeks leading up to Christmas, live in a plastic egg and hatch interact interactive creatures that respond to touch. Toys make unintelligible noises and can repeat words or phrases that humans teach them. As of now, there aren't any restrictions on what the Hatchimals can repeat. The series of videos popping up online are similar. Parents, parents claim the fuck me line only uttered when the creature is sleeping wasn't taught by their children. Some commenters are saying the Hatchimals are saying hug me instead. Look. Parents. So it's a Furby that comes in an egg. It's a yeah, it's a it's it's this generation's Furby or this this year's Furby or this whatever. Tamagotchi or whatever the fuck it is this year. Parents, stop looking at the toys and insisting to yourself they're trying to corrupt your children. Yeah. No one does this. Calm the fuck down. And if anyone did, I promise you it wouldn't make it past the 14 focus groups and levels of approval that these things get. Yes, because toy companies, they don't like being sued. Although it's... to be fair, there was that Barbie that said, math is hard, let's go shopping. Like, stupid shit happens. Yes. But not this kind of stupid No, shit. this this doesn't happen. You, you're here. You are literally hearing shit. Yeah. You need to rein it the fuck in, parents. Rein that shit. I know these things are awful, okay? These things are always awful because, Jesus Christ, these fucking things. I have... Well, like, remember when we were kids and you figured out that you could play literally any tape in a Teddy Ruxpin? <laughs> so you could have Teddy Ruxpin singing Black Sabbath at you? <laughs> like, you would play literally any cassette? Yes. It was a magical time. Um, I, have se I have, in fact, given Furbies to my friend's children. I know. To... Give their parents pain. I have done this on purpose. And that's why, and that's why karma gave you Grady. <laughs> that's just the universe giving you back some of your own. Ugh. Oh, he's so cute. Hello, Flophopotamus. He's like, what? I didn't, I didn't do nothing. Weird goofball. Oh, careful. Peggy doesn't want any part of us tonight. She's up on top of the other tower, sacked out. Maybe maybe instead of looking for, you know, swearing from your, your, your kids' toys, just don't buy them these horrible things. Yeah, like, I... I didn't have Cabbage Patch Kids when I was a kid because my mom was like, look, like, sometime around December 1st, she was like, listen... I know you want a Cabbage Patch Kid. Uh, Santa doesn't make those. <laughs> and I will be goddamned if I'm fighting with a riot of 50 other parents so you can get some stupid ugly doll. It's not going to happen. You're not getting one. Just deal with it. Mad respect. We dealt with it, and we didn't die. Well, 
This is, let's move along to our, oh, icky, what the fuck story for this week. This is just, I, motherfucker, what is wrong with you? I mean, I mean, I mean. Oh, this fucking. This fucking asshole. This is literally the definition of. And then there's this asshole. And I will tell you, I have been this girl because when I worked at the car hop as a teenager, uh, like 17 years old, I had some fucking 40 year old dude ask me out like three times. He used to come in every day for lunch. And I was like, you could be my father. Gross. Spoke Just take your french fries and go. Spokane man took to Facebook after he was banned from a Spokane's. Uh, Spokane, Spokane, Spokane. Spokane. Spokane, Starbucks. The man, who we will not identify due to the fact he has not been charged with the crime, said last week he was at a Starbucks on Main Street in downtown Spokane. He said he wrote a note out to a barista and said she is 16 years old. Which, you know, maybe that's not such a... I mean, it's, it's already... We'll get there. It's already a bad thing when you're, like, hitting on people in retail. Because... Yeah. They're kind of trapped there. They're not being... He literally has to be nice to you. Yes. Pretty much no matter what you do. They're not being nice to you because they want to touch your genitals. They're being nice to you because they don't want to starve. Right. Now, that's that's not already... with you. We're not interested. We just... We, we are contractually obligated to be nice to you. Now, that's that, that's already kind of bad. But if you're like maybe 17 years old, and there's a 16 year old barista, and, and you, you 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 make a pass at her, it's rude, little forgivable. Except this guy was 37. Yeah. This is what he posted on Facebook. Quote: I was flirted with by a barista. No, you weren't. No, you weren't. For some reason, she thought I was funny. No, she didn't. Said I was funny. She was lying. So I gave her a note to see if she'd be interested in dinner, said the man in a public Facebook post that has since gone viral, almost 4,500 shares and almost 3,000 likes. You know, like, 2,000 of those likes are ironic, though. God, I hope. Said he went to the same Starbucks next day, and a Spokane police officer told him he was banned from that location. Apparently, Starbucks management thought something in the note was inappropriate enough to get the police involved. He and this this is the the bit that just he says he feels he is being discriminated against because of his age. No, you didn't read the real bad part. Mm. I'm tired of hearing the word creep, as any black person or gay person is tired of hearing certain words, bro. No. 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 The no, next sentence. No, no. Do you want to read the next sentence or should I? I have a whole web page dedicated to age gap love. Oh, God. Me, I mean, I don't know if you're sick yet of the word pedophilia. Pederast? Is it pederast? I don't know. Statutory? I'm not... That's a word you might not have heard enough. You are not being fucking oppressed. No, you're you are not. not having a slur used against you. No, people you're not. are calling you creepy because you're fucking creepy. Yes, you are. And quite possibly a felon. Mm -mm. You are not you are not experiencing the plight of an oppressed person. I, I also note that he said, I just asked you to dinner. The police were there. I'm somehow guessing that note was maybe a little more graphic. And yeah, and the thing on. is, I worked at Starbucks for a while. The, the store manager has the discretion to ban customers. Yeah. They're allowed to do that from corporate. Like, if, if someone is really that abusive, the store manager does have discretion to ban customers. They don't generally get the police involved unless there's a reason. Yeah, how, like, how, when how? I worked at Starbucks, my store manager banned somebody. Because she just kept fucking trying to scam us. And she was a huge bitch about it. And every day she was yelling at somebody. And she came in one day and he made her drink. And he informed her that she was not welcome to come back. End of story. Cops don't get involved unless there's a reason. I, it just, it, 
I, yeah. You, you, I, I, no, I, I'm being discriminated against because of my age. No. no, you're not. You're in your 30s. Do you know how many people, how much of our economy is molded around you? Yeah. You're not, when you get to 60, talk to me about being, in your 30s, you are the demographic, okay? 18 to 35. You're being discriminated against because you're disgusting. Yeah, seriously. Leave the people who give you the food alone. Leave them alone. Yeah. Speaking and of leave the Also, you're not being fucking oppressed. Speaking of leave the people who give you your phone, give you your food alone. Holy shit. This is an entirely different thing, but... Uh, I have no idea what the fuck happened here. It's amazing, but I have no idea what the fuck happened here. Man destroys Richmond Donut Shop with sword. Oh. Okay. Richmond, California. Man was arrested on Christmas Eve after destroying a Richmond Donut Shop with a two-foot-long sword. Witness contacted officers on December 24th, reporting a man with a sword was knocking things over in Andy's Donut Shop. While officers were responding, an employee of the business called, said the man had destroyed things inside the business, and fled. Police found the man at a nearby U-Haul business, were able to calm him down and get the sword from him. The man was taken into custody on suspicion of vandalism and threatening people with a deadly weapon. The man's name was not immediately available. No one was injured. <laughs> Clearly, the ghost of Donuts Pass felt that they were selling these these pastries past their prime. I just... Which, That's a fucking katana. It's always a katana. It always is. Like, let it go with the fucking katana. You are not a samurai. No, you're not. There is no reason... You need a fucking, it's always a fucking katana. Every LARP, you got some fucking asshole in a trench coat with a katana. When's the last time you saw that in public? Besides this. Like, when's the last time you saw someone just casually carrying a fucking katana in public? Doesn't happen. You don't need one, you fucking gothy idiot. And, and, secondly. Do you have a katana? No. Okay, good. <laughs> I love how you had to check, though. Well, he does have some kind of... You have some kind of sword upstairs, don't you? Yeah, I have two swords, a dagger, several knives, six or seven guns. <laughs> Apocalypse survival plan. <laughs> but no katanas. I just... it. What? There is a story here we're not being told. Someone watched the Ginsu knife commercial and wanted to test it with his fucking katana. How do you find yourself on Christmas Eve in a donut shop with a... It's like a Mad Lib, isn't it? <laughs> Give me a date, a place, and a weapon. Uh, Christmas Eve, donut shop, katana. Go. <laughs> That's the worst improv skit ever. I mean, what the fuck just happened there? Can you... Uh, Tarantino is filming his new movie. That's all. And I was about to say, can you imagine the poor uh, employees? But, you know, no. Because they're just more or less like, yeah, same shit, different day. Well, did you ever see Gross Point Blank? The kid Long in the ago. convenience store when he blows it up? Are you okay? No, I'm not okay. I'm hurt. Pissed? I'm gonna find a new job. <laughs> Wait, it. Yeah, how do you get here? <laughs> I will ask as I always ask. How did you arrive at this place? What happened here? That is, that is a that, that is a quick trip to the naughty list. That's for damn sure. Yeah. Santa's not bringing you toys. I mean, thank God it wasn't a cookie shop, or he'd be proper fucked. You imagine Santa? Bring me my list elves. Yeah, Santa, we've got this guy who used a katana and a donut shop. What the shit is this? 
I don't understand. What the hell? How does this happen? How the hell did this happen? On maybe, Christmas Eve, you say? Well, maybe fuck was, that guy. Maybe it was Santa, and he's just not the guy we think he is. Uh, well. Okay. Have you ever dealt with a hit and run? No. I had this happen to me once long ago. I had, I got into an accident where a guy ran a stop sign, hit my car, and pull. He did. And the, the, this is the asshole thing. He pulled over for a second. It was like, oh no, we'll wait for the police to get here. And then like two seconds later, he drove the fuck away. So I'm just <gasps> sitting there in this intersection. My car fucked up, and I'm like, well, that was fun. Oh, that's fucked up. And well, the element. There are two elements of a hit and run. Okay. Two important parts of this whole concept. Two things that need to leave in order for a hit and run to be an effective hit and run. You and your car. This, the, the, our next story, the guy managed to accomplish one and not the other. Car plows into office building in Mission Valley. Driver gone. Oh. And there's, there's a picture right there. The wreckage abandoned by the driver was found Friday morning. Car plowed into an office building in Mission Valley Friday morning. When authorities got to the scene, the driver was nowhere to be found. The hit and run wreckage was first reported after 6.45 a.m., Outside a building, uh, uh, 2275 Rio Benito Way, car appeared to have veered off the roadway, jumped the curb, and drifted across the sidewalk, through some bushes, and into the windows of a building marked with the logo of Blue Shield of California. An insurance company? Yeah. Now that's what you call ironic. That's what you call one-stop service, you know? I don't think they do car insurance, though. Their health insurance. Well, no, but the building's got to be insured. Yeah. Um, yeah. Vehicle landed very awkwardly on its nose, sticking up vertically, resting on the side of the building. Now, it gets, it gets better. Police said the driver of the car was not immediately located. They pulled up the car's VIN number, began processing the location of the owner. A cell phone was found mounted inside the car. Police said would also examine to determine who was in the car when it crashed. So, I mean, they're gonna find you. They, you're, you're, you're not. I your car, been, your car is not anonymous. When you're in an accident, your only option to avoid horrible, horrible things befalling you, worse than the accident, is to pull the fuck over. And wait for the cops. Cooperate. Because if you don't, if you decide, well, I'm leaving, shit gets way worse. There's jail involved for some of that shit. And to top this off, you did this halfway. You left all of the evidence. Yeah, all the evidence. You... You, you were not exactly like, you know, a master crew. They'll never fucking find me. Are they sure anyone was in the car? It had to be like, somebody. I'm picturing, I'm picturing some shit where he jumped out while it was running. Well, still, you're still responsible for that shit. Well, yes, you are. I mean, I am impressed that he managed to, to do that. Yeah. And walk the fuck or run the fuck away or whatever what the fuck you did. But maybe he just got zapped back to his dimension. What? That was in an episode of Fringe. She got in a car wreck in one in one universe and came slamming through the windshield in the other universe. It was amazing. Yes, Tara, that's exactly what happened. You don't know that it's not. You've cracked the case. I bet I have. I mean, you, you, you've got to le not leave the car. 
It's I, I love even how the story calls it a hit and run. I mean, I don't think that car was in drivable condition, though. Exactly. You're not getting away. <laughs> like, he can't really take the car with him. You're not leaving. This this is kind of one of those things where you're fucked. <laughs> those driverless Ubers really need some work. <laughs> and finally, we have a very Canadian sort of story. This... Eh? This is just perfect in its own way. Um, You've watched Breaking Bad, right? Yes. Remember when they stole the ATM? Yes. Well, we had th this is pretty this is pretty much the Canadian spin on stealing the ATM. <laughs> Edmonton police lay charges after ATM theft with front end loader. Oh. Edmonton police charged a man they say was caught in the act of stealing an ATM with a front end loader. The third bank machine theft in two days. Wow. Police say the man used the loader to break into uh, Cashco Loans pawn shop uh, Friday morning for chaining up an automated teller machine and yanking it out of the store. The windows and doors of the storefront were demolished. A TV was pushed into the building ceiling tiles. A day earlier, an ATM was stolen from another Casco loan store. Just there yesterday, and all the windows were covered up. They didn't break the doors, just the windows in the side. The suspect in the Friday robbery was charged with breaking and enter. Um, this point, point, we believe the two thefts are connected. Uh, Vandalin said an ATM was also stolen from a business in the city's northwest making it three ATM robberies in the last two days. Now, here's the best part. In the Friday morning incident, a vehicle that only reaches speeds of 20 kilometers an hour didn't make for the best of getaway cars. A passing police cruiser spotted the front end loader driving in the Homesteader neighborhood at a slow speed chase ensued. The officer tailed the machine for about 10 blocks before the suspect was apprehended. The man behind the wheel of the loader finally came to the stop and was arrested without incident. There was an ATM in the bucket of the loader. Police say the front end loader used in the theft had been reported stolen. If I recall from that episode of Breaking Bad, the ATM was really fucking hard to get into. Yes, they are. So... Also, I feel like they're probably tracked. Yes, they are. Because they carry a lot of money. So they I feel are. like they might have a GPS chip in them or something. I mean, my fucking cats have a GPS chip in them. Like, you know, although my cats are more valuable than money well, though, to me. Your cats do not have a GPS. They have a microchip. Yes. It's different. But you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I I'm betting that thing's low jacked. So even if you get into it, which is going to be tough. They still know where you are. Yeah. Also, I just love the balls on this guy. Yeah, you're just going to rip open the front of a building. 20 kilometers an hour is not very fast. That's your top speed. And you're just trucking down the street with the ATM sitting in the bucket. Yes. 10 blocks. It took 10 blocks to get him to pull over. How is that possible? I just imagine he's sitting in the car going, oh, no, go around, eh? No, it's <laughs> just going around, Why eh? Why did he not just pull ahead of him? Go on. No, it's okay. You can go around. No, it's fine. What is the mile equivalent of 20 kilometers an hour? Um, 10 miles, 15 miles an hour, I think. Oh, my God. It's like a golf cart. Yes, it is. How did they have to follow him for 10 blocks? <laughs> that, I wish there was video of that because that sounds amazing. That sounds ridiculous. It sounds like the Zamboni scene in Deadpool. It's 12.5 miles per hour, yes. Wow. <laughs> like you, there are people who can walk faster than that. <laughs> for 10 blocks. I think most people can walk faster than that. You know, the cop was in his car like, Oh yeah, control A. Uh, you're not gonna believe this shit, yeah? 
Yeah, this, this this is happening right now. Like maybe the cops were just like, let's just see where this goes. <laughs> it's, it's a let's slow fucking, morning. We can catch him anytime we want. Let's just see how this plays out. Let's see how long he keeps. They this were up. probably going at twelve. Hey, you know, while we're going, can you hop out and hop get to the Tim Hortons while we're? Yeah. Yeah, catch up with me down. I'll be down the road a bit. Oh, yeah. but there's someone in there with a katana, eh? <laughs> I mean, god damn. I love the, the nerve of this guy. He steals the front end loader. He goes on a spree and steals three ATMs from two from the same franchise. I feel like there was a better way to make some quick cash. If you could steal a front end loader, you have skills that you would need to be put to use elsewhere. Right. Like, I feel like there were better, easier crimes we could have committed here. <laughs> I just, it's, I'm, I'm, it's like, this is totally fuck it. This is, all, fuck it. Why not? I, 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 my, my theory is the cops were just like, you know what? Let's just. Let's just see how long he goes. <laughs> yeah, because it's, you know, it's it's Alberta. Like, Not what's a lot going, going on. What's going on up there? This, yeah. this is as good a way to spend the afternoon as any. I know. They have got they don't have to worry about the leader of their country being completely insane. They got Justin Trudeau. I know. He's all suave and feminist and shit. Like, Can speak in actual sentences. Yes. Like they're they're doing okay. Yeah, I know. So the cops are probably just like, eh, we might as well, you know, earn earn our cash but, today. You know, Canada is technically a Commonwealth of England. Mm -hmm. So I, I should have looked this up by now, but I keep it like it occurs to me every now and then in passing whether or not Brexit is affecting them at all. No, some of you are Canadian. No, I didn't think so because they're not European Union. No. And they're not on the pound or anything. So they're they're pretty much just like, they're fine. Yeah, Canada just kind of keeps to themselves and <sighs> like they're smart up there because they pretty much do their thing and let the rest of us fuck each other up. I, the first thing we learned this week, if you have the skills to do incredibly unwieldy and ridiculous crimes, you can probably legitimately make money. Yeah, like plan a better caper than this. Yeah, well, you don't even—you probably don't even need to plan a caper. You could come up with some crazy shit on YouTube that's legal, like say riding a handy cart through the Walmart. That's not legal. No, or no, it was a motorbike. Motorbike, yes, that's not. You could come up with something that was legal and put it on the YouTube, and not go to jail and make money. Cause this. No. We've learned that if you are in it, if you were in a car accident, don't run. Mm -mm. And especially don't run and leave all the evidence because Yeah, especially if the car isn't coming with you. We've said this many times before. Your house is not home base. No. Just because you get back to your house does not mean, you know, all is forgiven. Safe. No, that's not how that works. It's not how that works. Oh, I we Oh, Brexit affects us. We laugh at it at the pub. Nah, good. Good man. Um, we've learned that the katana is the dorkiest weapon to commit a crime with. It really is. I mean, make us work here, people. Really? Because the katana, that, that's amateur hour. Like, get a fucking claymore and maybe I'll take you serious. We've learned retail employees, they don't want to get to know you. We don't. They don't like you. We don't. They have to be nice to you. This yep. is how they pay their bills. Yep. It does not mean you have finally found love in a hopeless place. No. You've just found a hopeless place because it's retail. Yeah. Um, we've learned it is quite likely that, uh, no, your child's toy is not speaking horrible, horrible curses. 
That's probably what, not. Probably not. That's what they Unless it's that magic wand we covered that had porn in it. Yeah, but that Remember was that? Yeah, that was kind of a fly by night thingy. That was a dollar store piece of crap. Yeah. Like this is something put out by a major corporation. And finally we've learned kids are scary smart. You got to watch them motherfuckers or they will steal your money. Yeah. And then they try to be all cute and shit. Because I tell you what, this little... Th where'd you go, little fucker? That furry little fucker? He lucky he cute. That's why he ain't dead.